Hi there. Greetings. Salutations. How are you? My name is Jake Quarry. This is Derek Schultz. Derek, this is, if I'm not mistaken, on Quarry and Schultz are on the ISC Sports Network. What was that? Are we doing a salute now? I said, I, did I say greetings and salutations? Hello. I didn't. Salutations. You kind of, you kind of did a. What did you do? Did I do a salute? You did like a hand signal deal. I don't know. That's all right. Just we'll grab wave. that. At, we'll grab that in post. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No big deal. It's not uh, weird. Number forty. Is that right? Uh, I think it's thirty-nine. Are you sure? 39. I think thirty-nine was last week. Pretty I think we sure no, nah, we went thirty-eight, and then we didn't mention, 39. and then now I think it's forty. I will sure? verify. How about? Can you that? do that right now? Can you look verify. that up? We should probably verify these things before the show begins. Well, we were doing mic checks because you were just uh, you know guessing on what episode. <laughs> I it think is it's either thirty-nine or forty for Quarian. If shows. it's thirty-nine, what athlete do we go with for for thirty-nine? It is thirty-nine. Oh, man, thirty-nine. That's. That's tough. I feel like there's some Wasn't defensive Sergio back. Wasn't Sergio Brown 39 with the Colts? Am I wrong about that? Sergio Brown Colts. Another thing that we should verify before the show begins. <laughs> he, Jake, cause he didn't, is he the one that play, that's from Indiana? Uh, no, Stevie Brown. Was Stevie from Indiana, Brown was so. from Columbus. Okay. Yeah. Sergio Brown went to Notre Dame. Okay. So also kind of, I guess, somewhat. So did Stevie time. Brown, right? No, Stevie Brown went to Michigan. That's right. Yeah. Okay. 38 was Sergio Brown. Sorry, well, I was what, one off. Look up famous 39. Famous so. number 39. Uh, hi there, how are you? My name is Jake Quarry. That is Derek Schultz. This is the incredibly creatively and appropriately named, somewhat charitably award-winning Quarry and Schultz program. As we get into June, there is still plenty to talk about, even though it feels like we're in the dog days of summer. And, of course, we have a lot to get to today, including our American Dairy Association of Indiana Winners Drink Milk Winner of the Week, our Love Heating and Cooling Love That Play, and, of course, Bider Bullschultz brought to you by The Shop Indy. Uh, but, Derek, your in your opinion, because I'm just going to defer this to you, topic A right now is... Julio Jones to the Titans, probably? It's pretty big. I would say. I mean, it's we're kind big. of in the wake. We're taping this right now on Monday, and that just broke... 24 hours ago right. essentially it was the biggest storyline of the nfl weekend so I, I think it's big in the sense how it affects the colts because that's the team really that they're chasing the jaguars yes they drafted trevor lawrence but they're not there yet most people agree that houston especially in, with the deshaun watson situation might be the worst roster in right. the entire league even with deshaun watson that's not going to be a playoff team so really this is a two-team race in the afc south and the team that you're competing with just added a big piece you know if you look at his time in miami Ryan Tannehill was a quarterback that was drafted. He was competent with the Dolphins. He was not a yeah, dumpster he was fine. fire. He was whatever. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, they decided to to, to part ways and, and move on from him. Speaking Go of the back. Dolphins, by the way, Larry Zonka, famous number 39. Is he really? Yes. Okay, there we go. So this is the Larry Zonka episode. Thank you. <laughs> um, look at who Ryan Tannehill had helping him in Miami, okay? His best running back was probably Frank Gore. Jay Ajay, is that his name? Wasn't he there for like a year, I think? Yeah. Ajay. He, he, he would have Jay been Ajay. there for some of that portion. But his who was his best receiver? Oh. Was, was Amandola there for a year, I think? I, I don't know. Kenny Stills, maybe? Kenny Stills was, was there. there he did have there. Let me look but, up. I'm going to look up the 2015 Miami Dolphins stat leaders. Okay. And see if I can... But look at who Ryan Tannehill now has. And Ryan Tannehill has grown into being a really nice quarterback. Is he, you know, the second coming of Aaron Rodgers? No, but he is a nice, solid quarterback. But you can be – it's easy to be a nice, solid quarterback that's that's now, you know, an Alex Smith-level competent postseason quarterback when you've got Derrick Henry to hand off to, and then you've got A.J. Brown and as well now it appears Julio Jones keeping defenses honest – with that running game, Derek, if Tennessee's able to get themselves leads going into the fourth quarter, when you've got Derek Henry behind there to salt away clock, they're going to be a tough out. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it's a really good, it's a really good group of offensive skill players: Brown, Jones, Henry, who you just mentioned, and and really funny enough, Jake. Tennessee has never had good skill position players. Like when the Colts have dominated this rivalry, yeah, they had Chris Johnson. They had a couple of good running backs, but their receivers. Eddie George, yeah. I mean, their best receiver probably in the Manning into Luck era. And I was joking about this with Greg Rakestraw last night on Wish TV. Kevin Dyson, Nate Washington. Well, uh, yeah, Kevin okay. Dyson would be like more the McNair era. Uh, but even Kevin okay. Dyson, I mean, you know, was, right. he was fine. He was okay. He wasn't a great player. They've never really had dynamic receiving Randy talents. Moss. They had Randy Moss. They had the guy uh, that got arrested a bunch. Kenny Britt. 
Yeah, yeah. Remember, he was a first-round pick and never really materialized for them. They drafted Corey Brown, who's whatever. He's just a guy. Um, so it's a, it's a great group. Uh, when you look back at those Dolphins teams, Tannehill didn't really have much. He had Mike Wallace at the end, Lamar Miller, the final effective years okay. for Lamar Miller, and then early Jarvis Landry, who turned into a really good player and, and had some good seasons in Miami before he ended up moving on. I, you know, I just – it is, you are correct, a, a – the rivalry's back, to quote Chris Ballard, right? It was yeah. it was the Patriots he was talking about when he said the rivalry's back on. But with Tennessee now, Colts and Titans, rivalry back. No, for sure. And they're, like I said, clearly the upper crust teams in the AFC South. And I'll be fascinated to see what Julio Jones does because he's 32. And generally receivers, once they start to right. creep into the mid-30s, um, have some problems. But he's only two years removed from – an all-pro level season. He had six straight, Jake, 1,300-yard or more seasons. Like, I don't know if people He's realize a great it. player. You can really argue that of, of the most dominant receivers of their era, Randy Moss in his era, most recently, Julio Jones in his era, you can definitely make – he's a Hall of Fame player. He is. To your point, change of scenery sometimes for wide receiver does not automatically mean transfer of – everything that comes with it age has something to do with that uh, sometimes maybe it's just familiarity you know there's a lot that goes into it I'm not saying Julio Jones is not going to be a dynamic player and I know that there's probably a significant difference particularly in their age at the time but do you remember Derek in the time that you and I did a radio show together who were the two acquisitions that people were the most backflip gaga about for the Colts well, Andre Johnson was one of them. He's number People one. People went crazy about that. And, and and what happened? Yeah, nothing. I mean, he was totally, totally except for one game in cooked. Houston. Yeah, just had nothing left. Um, People really got up about Frank Gore, who I you know overall was fine, but certainly wasn't a. Di- same, Frank Gore's never been same a position. Player. Another guy. A wide receiver? No, same position as Frank Gore, but another player. Oh, Trent Richardson. Right. Yeah, obviously. But and, the and point being, you, you just never know. Up. With a change of scenery, you never know what may happen. No, uh, I mean, the difference is, let's take Trent out of the equation because Andre Johnson and Julio Jones have proven that they can play at a high level. Trent right. Richardson never proved that. There was still the potential that he could get there being the number three pick or whatever he ended up being uh, one year removed for that from when he came here. I think Jones, even if he's a 1,000-yard receiver, Jake, that's – do you that remember, changes things for do you the remember, Titans. Shock and awe. Yeah. <laughs> Griggs is wheeling and dealing, Honestly, bringing a whopper. I, I, I think it was know. a whopper, right? Wasn't it was that, a whopper. Yeah. I don't know if we should ever compare any team's free agent, wide receiver, or trade acquisitions to the Colts because the Colts, it's been so bad for them the last 10 years. You think about all the names that they've brought in. Darius hayward Bay, Hakeem Nix. Andre Johnson, no, Donnie Avery. You're, you're missing the biggest one, literally. Kamar Aiken. You're you're literally missing the biggest one. Ryan Grant. Remember that dude who they got in from Washington? You're missing the you're missing all. the biggest one, literally the biggest one. Who was the guy that like all he did was was post selfies from the gym of like the biceps out to here. Muscle on muscle on muscle. Leron Landry? Yes. But he's not a receiver. I'm only oh, talking oh. about – yeah, sorry. I'm only talking about wide receivers. You just said free agents. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I just meant specifically that spot for the Colts has been littered uh, with – For the Colts at wide receiver free ones. agent signings, the best one they've had was like in week 12 when they signed Dontrell Hinman. Yeah. And Donnie Avery was a nice player. Uh, but when Donnie Avery is the gold standard of full season free agent play, that's – that just shows how bad it's been for you. But it's hard for me, Jake, to – this is going to sound really arrogant, uh, which I uh, obviously you guys at home know how humble I am. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. It's hard for me to take Tennessee seriously because the Colts have been stuffing them in a trash can for 15 years. And it's just recently that Tennessee has been able to start to consistently – they've won the last two games in Indianapolis. They still get beaten like a drum in Nashville. The Colts still own them there. But, like, mentally I've had to shift. Wait been, a minute, Tennessee is now the biggest threat. Have you been to Nashville? Finally, my wife and I went almost exactly a year ago this weekend. Did you enjoy Nashville? Oh, it was great. What a, I couldn't believe how clean it was. Did you do the Hermitage? Yep, we did the Hermitage. Um, there's also a bargain hunt down there nearby. So we went to bargain hunt bargain hunt. Yeah. What's that exactly? So when target and some other stores have clearance stuff that doesn't sell, they sell it to a different clearance store and it gets marked down even more. So I got like, um, pasta sauce, deodorant, um, got, got some clothes. I got a pair of shorts. Pasta sauce. Yeah. 
like severely discounted pasta. I paid 80 cents for usually what six dollars a bottle, like good pasta sauce. Did it have an expiration date? Well, it's jarred, and the expiration date is usually you had to eat it pretty quickly. Um, I think you have to eat it on the way home. We were about no, nothing like that. I think it was about uh, two weeks away from from being gone. But the color looked good and smelled fine when I opened it, so we ate it and it was delicious. Okay. Did you get any urine stained pants? No, that you're thinking of the Gap damaged factory outlet in Kentucky. Yeah. That's a different store. You got a pair of pants for 80 cents, free. right? Well, yeah, I got a, it, it. They fit me great. The problem was is that there was I thought it was coffee, but the stain was a little more in the lower crease of the pants crotch area. So that's what made me believe it was urine, but it came out in the wash. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then I got a dollar pants. So. Uh, Nashville is a cool city, though. Yeah, great Indy spot. IndyCar going to Nashville here coming up in like six weeks. What's the track like? Have you ever been there? It's brand new. Oh, okay. It's a street course that goes around where the stadium is, near the stadium. Oh, so they're going to set something up for this. Correct. Okay. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, because I, when I was there, um, the whole skyline was buildings and cranes and derricks, oh, yeah. basically. Well, it still is, <laughs> just, right? Yeah. Just, just everywhere there was, there was stuff just hanging in the sky because they – it's like they couldn't build everything fast enough. But um, we're not country music people at all, but just kind of the culture of that and the live music and the food was fantastic. We had, you know, biscuits and fried chicken and uh, Because you have to stuff. go to Nashville to get biscuits and fried chicken. Why do you always you, do you this? You can't where, get that. Why, why do you, why you, you, do you can't always go, give me a hard time about this? Well, I'm just saying, biscuits, like I thought you were going to go with something, you know, like, oh, we had this amazing biscuits and fried chicken. You get that anywhere. There's a place in Nashville Cracker called Barrel, Biscuit, Biscuit Love, in. which I'm pretty sure those sandwiches are like 3,500 calories each. Right. But it's a biscuit and you put like a, there was a fried chicken thigh they put on it with syrup. I think they might have put an egg on it, cheese. It was, it was so good. I still think about that sandwich sometimes. Did you not eat then for like a week? Like, and then what, what else did I have there? We had good barbecue there. Okay. Um, por pork, peg leg porker, I think, was the barbecue place that we peg had. Peg leg porker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is a great city. Yeah. I mean, you'd go to Chili's, but um, um, that's that's not how we operate. That's If Chili's is good enough for the vice president of New York City, it's good enough for me, Derek. Okay. I've forgotten that the Pence family. Uh, in in terms of franchises in this city – and seeing what other franchises are doing and then suddenly questioning themselves or wondering where they are in comparison. We talk about the Titans going out and getting Julio Jones, what that means for the Colts. How about the Pacers looking and seeing their former head coach winning in the playoffs in Atlanta? Yeah, good for Nate McMillan. Let's get that out of the way. I don't think anybody feels ill towards Nate McMillan if you do there's something wrong with you because right. he seems like a nice guy. And again, Jake – I don't think anybody questioned that he was a competent head coach. I think the question was, has he reached his expiration date? There's a lot of revisionist history here where people are like, well, they should have kept him because the the Pacers were going nowhere this year, even with Nate McMillan, especially given the the injury situation Correct. that they ended up having. So we would be having if, – if, if everything had stayed the same, we'd be having the same conversation today about McMillan that we had last year or that we're having about Nate Bjorgen is he, right now. Is Nate, was Nate McMillan in Indiana your 80-cent pasta sauce? I have always felt like Nate McMillan is the perfect example of a uh, – I'm trying to think of the, the quarterback that we always use for this. For a while it was Alex Smith, but then Alex Smith played a little bit above that level. Um, the Andy Dalton of NBA head coaches. Right. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, sure. I, I think Fitzpatrick is right in there. He's fine. There's a reason why he's stuck around so long. I mean, clearly he's he's done a pretty good job. But getting out of the first round for the first time since 05 and snapping, I think it was like a seven or eight series streak. Good for him. But you look on paper, and it was a little weird for me because I'm kind of like a – and I'm not even really a Knicks fan anymore. But looking on paper – that Atlanta roster is 10 times as talented as that Knicks roster. Correct. <laughs> I mean, well, I'll, I'll tell you if what. If you were redrafting those teams, you would take uh, four Hawks out of the first five picks When probably. you've got – here's the thing with Atlanta. Atlanta is – this reminds me of – now, I don't – I mean, I don't want this to be taken out of context where it's like, oh, my – you know, you're an idiot for – it's a very lighter version thereof. But when he is on his game and, and in rhythm, Trey Young has – emerging Steph Curry type characteristics like and when I say emerging I'm not saying he's emerging into being Steph Young, Steph Curry 
I'm saying when Steph Curry first started really emerging in the NBA, which was fairly quickly in his tenure, but Trey Young is like that. He can he can score from anywhere, right? I mean, he is lightning in a bottle type guy. So when Trey Young is on like he was for some of those games in the Garden, they're going to be really tough to beat. And they have other complimentary players that are good young players, no question about it. But you just don't hear much about Atlanta. I think the problem for Trey is that because he's not Luka, people are like, oh, okay, well, Trey Young's just a guy. And it's like, no, he's not just a guy. He's not Luka, but right. he's he's a great but player. But he was involved in a trade there, right? Uh, yes, that was they were traded for each other. Correct. The draft rights Correct. on draft night. Correct. Um, but there was a big kind of debate on, you know, is it going to be Luka, is it going to be Trey? Because if I remember right, it was – Aiton, who we had on at Radio Row, who was the consensus first pick, and then I think Luca went two, I think, and then Trey went Did four I, or five I, or something I, like I that. I thought I'll have to go back and look it up. I thought Dallas moved up, Atlanta slid back, allowed Dallas to, to move up to get Luca, and maybe, then maybe that's what Atlanta it was. I, took Trey Young. I, I don't remember the exact circumstances, but both of them were top five picks. But but either way, involved in a deal with each other. Either way, Atlanta's you know an exciting young team. Yeah. Um, and a great win for them over Philly. I mean, turned some correct. heads. They they blew them out early and then held off a rally late. But, again, I, I don't think it changes anything. Sometimes you just reach an expiration date, and it's not because that person isn't a good coach or isn't a good fit. They were probably previously, but you just feel like it's best for both sides to move on. In a lot of ways, I felt like it was that way for Indiana and Tom Crean. Like once Archie Miller was a disaster, people were saying, "Well, they could have, they should have kept Tom Crean the whole time." And I'm thinking to myself, "Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think that's that's the remedy for Indiana's situation. I think that still moving on from Nate McMillan hey, to me was still the right move. The wrong move was hiring Nate Bjorkman. I'll tell you this: I don't think, and then we'll get to that. I don't think Tom Crean will be at Georgia in two years. Two years will be five years in. He's been there three. Is that right? He took a year off, right? Yeah, and Archie that lasted right. four, yeah. so I, I think that's right. I think he's just completed year number three. Uh, maybe. Um, he still has gotten talent there. You know, Anthony Understood. Edwards and has done a good job recruiting, but the results haven't been there. I don't know. I feel like at a place like Georgia, I haven't followed his situation at all. I'll be totally honest with you. I feel like a Wasn't place there, at Georgia give, would give him a lot of leash. I, I don't know why. A lot of rope. I, I thought I heard that there was an investigation right now with the NCAA at Georgia or something along those lines. I could oh, be totally really? wrong. I, but I haven't um, paid. I've paid as much attention to Georgia basketball with Tom Crean as I did prior to Tom Crean, which is zero. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, okay. it's, it's it's the Nebraska. Which of, did you uh, as the SEC? Which did you follow more closely prior to Indiana, Georgia basketball or Tom Crean? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a good question too. Um, <laughs> Nate Bjorkman, though, Derek. To me, it's funny. The coaching situation with the Pacers. This is what we need to get to next because. This is fascinating to me, something that's unfolding that may not be unfolding, something that is on the horizon when, in fact, it may not even be sunrise. Hmm. Like a story that is a non-story that might be a story. Okay. You want to get to that next? Yeah, we'll explain it all next. It's Quarian Schultz here on ISC. It's here. The moment that will define you. So think of this moment as your moment. The one you've been waiting for. You were built for it. And so were we. WGU, the online university where ambition never rests. Indiana dairy farmers provide us with safe, pure foods for our tables. A responsibility that takes intuition, resolve, and determination to make sure their milk is good for you and delicious to taste. Their connection with our community runs deep, passed down through the generations, ensuring that milk is always available at your store. It's not easy being a dairy farmer, but the rewards have special meaning when you can feed Indiana's families every single day. Learn more at winnersdrinkmilk.com. At Bailey & Wood, we pride ourselves on our five-star customer service, but at our core, we're a family. Family-owned, 
and family to our customers, staff, and our community. From charity events to recognizing hometown heroes, we prioritize giving back to our communities that have always supported our growth. So let us help you get your dream home today. Welcome back to Quarry and Schultz. Thanks so much for joining us here on ISU Sports Network. Alongside Jake Quarry, I'm Derek Schultz. This portion of the program brought to you by Split Owl, Bailey and Wood. What was that? Mortgage Lender. Split Owl, like in your face. You've Fair never way. heard that term before? No. You've really been sheltered. I watched a lot of Batman. Batman. Pow. Wham. Oh, wow. So like the 19, 1960s TV. <laughs> yeah. I didn't actually watch a lot of it, but it was on syndication like when I was a kid West. in Shelbyville. Yeah. I think Matt McNeely used to watch Burt it. Burt Ward? Like, Is that who played Robin? <laughs> I, I don't know. Is it Burt Ward? I don't know. I might just be making that name up. Okay. I have no idea. I've got Burt Ward in my head for some reason. Indiana's hometown mortgage lender. You can was give it them Robin? A call. I thought Robin's name was Dick. Oh, it was Dick. Something. Dick Grayson or something? Yeah, that's right. Is that the actor or is that the, no, the, that's, the real guy? No, 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 no. Robin's name, like like Clark Kent, is right. Superman's name, is Dick Grayson, I believe, okay. is what it is. Right. Yeah. So not the actor that played him. But I think Burt Ward played Robin. I'll look that up. We'll get all this in post, Jordan, I so think, just go ahead and mark I this. I think Robin was, like, booted out of the nest when he was a kid, and Batman was the one that took all him right, in. enough. 855 I, That's really what 530 happened. 530-HOME. B A W F G dot com for Bailey and Wood Financial Group. Mike home. Wood and his team. 855 350 home. home. If you're looking to refi, rates are still low, but they're climbing. They're bouncing back. You could still refi, though, especially if you're like in the fours or four and a half. That's what we did um, and, and got down into the, the low threes. You can do that with them. Also, you can get uh, pre approved if you're in the market for a home, which is really important right now in a competitive housing market, especially for buyers. B A W F G dot com, Indiana's hometown mortgage lender, and they're going to take care of you. Do it with a local team. Forget the national guys. Have Mike Wood and his team take care of you. 13 Indiana branches for Bailey and 855 350 home. Is it 350 or 530? No, 350. Yeah, you're right. Yep. I, I have trouble with that number for some reason. BAWFG.com comes naturally to me, but I, I just have you a know, little... The Bailey and Wood folks actually called me over the week, and they said, we want to thank you number. for being the one consistently directing people where to go. Hmm. That's what they said to me. We'll get all that uh, in the post. Nate Bjorkren, I don't know whether or not he's going to have to be calling real estate agents. Uh, we certainly know he doesn't need to buy a home in Indianapolis, but my understanding is he is now... Phoenix, I believe, is where he spends his offseason. And as soon as the season was over, and they did the exit interviews, Nate Bjorkren, <laughs> off to the Valley in the Sun. And... Look, to me, it's interesting that we just automatically assume, and by we, I mean fans, you know, media, everybody in Indianapolis, who's going to be the Pacers' next head coach? Well, they have a coach. They haven't fired him. You're not wrong. He's under contract. They, yeah, you're not wrong. So, you know, Terry Stotts in Portland, a guy that, that you know, has lived elsewhere but went to high school in Bloomington, Indiana ties. I think his journey took him at one point through Oklahoma. Kevin Pritchard came from Portland, went to high school, you know, lived in Bloomington as a kid. I think at one point spent time in Oklahoma. I don't think their paths have ever actually crossed. Which is weird with all the similar ties that right. they have. But Terry Stotts is one that you think, oh, well, here's the Pacers' next head coach. He's done a nice job in Portland. Good coach. Like you said, maybe just that ceiling was there, and so they decided it was time for a change. But the Pacers have a coach, Derek. For now. Every, but it's been how long? Well, just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. I, I think it probably will. Everybody that I've but talked I'm just to saying, f seems to believe that he's gone, which is weird that the decision would take this long. Right. Um, I think it's a change that you make, Jake, because – you have to change something. It would be really, really hard. And we've got, for as much as people knock fans in Indianapolis, I think we have a very patient fan base for the most part here. Far more patient than what you see in some bigger right. markets like Chicago and New York. But I think part of that is because of the way Pacer fans have been groomed. Because, trust me, I remember it. You know, obviously a million things have been said about Reggie Miller being drafted over Steve Alford. But after that, when Rick Smiths was drafted in 88, you know, really? Like this skinny, look at this guy from Marist. What is Marist? And Smiths had to play immediately in his rookie year because of injuries. 
and was not good. I mean, he was he was 140 pounds or something, not literally, but you know, he got pushed around a lot. And then in 89, George McLeod is the pick, and that's a bust. Ooh. So you make the trade and you send Detlef Shrimp out to get Derek McKee. And, you know, and people are, what is going on? This is terrible. Yeah, why would you deal Detlef Shrimp? And then it all starts coming together, right? Mm-hmm. Antonio Davis is brought in and Dale Davis. And, it, you know, once it gelled together, then people were like, ah, we get it now. So I do think that the, the fan base here has been conditioned and groomed to be patient because they've seen that that can work. Patience can pay off. But in this case with Nate Bjorkren, and I know that we now live in a in a boom boom immediate society. But all indication is that it was a disaster. Yeah, he was just in over his head. It, it just didn't Well, work. and just not a good he might know the game of basketball. Open disclaimer, I don't know him. He might be the nicest guy in the world. My understanding is inside the building, just rub people the wrong way and people didn't want to buy in. Yeah. And if, if there's question about him, he's not going to have people stepping I, up I down heard, his back. I, somebody told me that he I, – I can actually say it because we did a podcast together and I don't, I, he put his name on it. Jay Michael, the Indy Star, told me um, he kisses up and P-I-S-S-E-S down. Sorry, I didn't know if we were allowed to say that word. But kisses up and pees down, if you will. And that's a pretty strong indictment, I think, of Bjorkren. But I, it's funny that you mentioned Portland because Portland just went out in the first round – and they've got a guy in Damian Lillard who's this great player, and four out of the last five years they haven't gotten out of the first round. And I just kind of looked at that, and then I looked at the Pacers, and I'm thinking to myself, man, Portland's got a guy, and they still can't get anywhere. Right. The Pacers don't even have a guy, and they can't get anywhere. You I just think, think – Here's the thing, though, This Derek. roster – I'm not trying to be mean or anything. This roster isn't going anywhere. Karis LeVert and this group of players, and you said, well, we haven't seen what they can do. I, I know already what they can do. Look around the playoffs right now. You need to have at least one guy, if not two guys, to really have a chance to seriously contend and be more than first or second round fodder. And the Pacers don't even have that. So, you know, part of me is kind of like, while I, I, I would argue for a coaching change, I'm not so sure that it matters because I don't think this group is good enough. But we don't know that. That's the challenge here for Kevin I do Pritchard. know that. But hear me out. Karis Levert, who had a nice, once he was healthy, showed that he can be a nice player. Malcolm Brogdon, DeMontis Sabonis and Miles Turner, TJ Warren, and then your complimentary pieces of Doug McDermott, Justin Holiday, TJ McConnell, and they're probably going to have to make a decision on one of those two between McConnell and McDermott, which one they keep. I would go with McConnell personally. I'd go with um, McDermott, but I don't think they're going to be able to afford him. But we haven't seen those pieces working together at all as a unit. Now, T.J. Warren, who is a nice player, I worry that T.J. Warren is a guy, Derek, that is a my proverbial 20-25 guy. Going to score 20 a game on a team that, have, that wins 25 yeah. games a year for the rest of his career. I, there's no body of work to say that he is an integral part of a championship-level team. But then again, he hasn't had the opportunity to show that, so that's not on him. That's not necessarily his fault. The guy that I – do you know the guy that when people talk about who are the Pacers going to deal? Turner or Sabonis? Turner or Sabonis? Do you know who the guy that I think is – and I have nothing to base this on other than just watching body language and instinct and other such things. Do you know who the guy is on that roster that I think is the biggest hindrance? Brogdon? Yes. I think Brogdon just does not – doesn't play well with others. Yeah, I think that's perfectly fair. Um, that's who I would deal. Even though you know, I was I was told that he's not the person that's pushing for Bjorgren's ouster, but clearly he was not on board with McMillan, which was part of the right. reason why that all – and you wonder and you how remember, much of the locker room drama goes Brogdon, back to that. Brogdon, at the beginning of the year, was the guy that was overcompensating in terms of his support oh, yeah. for Bjorgren. yeah. We got a great coach out there. Because he da, knows da, da. he was labeled as the guy that pushed the other guy out. So he wanted to be sure to, you know, plant his flag yeah. in the new guy, which ended up, of course, backfiring for them. But, yeah, and, and again, Jake, it, it all goes back to do the pieces fit? You're right. We have not seen this group together. But have we seen enough of these pieces individually to be like, even if I put all of this together, it's probably 
not going to work. It's like when you're throwing together a crock pot recipe or something and you put all of it together and you're like, uh, even, even the, the stuff separately and you're like, eh, this is, this is, have you ever gotten like halfway through a recipe and then you've just dumped it in the trash? Cause that's happened to me a bunch. And I, th- I feel like the Pacers, a recipe maybe should do that. Yeah. That would imply that you've what ever about cooked your, before. You couldn't save your crock pot with your 80 cents pasta. No, it's it's really hard for me to part with all of that to throw out food. I don't want to waste anything because you know how cheap I am when it comes to that stuff. Uh, let me ask but the you pacers about... are cheap too, so this is actually a really good analogy. Uh, uh, in, in terms of crockpots, are they supposed to rattle? No. Yeah, does yours? Well, I, I don't have one, but the other day, Shannon had chicken in the crockpot, and now it was on the counter doing this. Yeah, no, they should be completely stationary, uh, crockpots. <laughs> yeah. Now, was it a live chicken in the crockpot, or no, did no, she, she not, made that, sure to? It's okay. an excellent question. Yeah. Um, it was, it was just two breasts of chicken, but it was, it was doing that. And then I saw that this is us where the house burned down because of the crockpot. You know, oh, then you boy. get nervous, yeah. right? No, the Pacers. It's just, and I know you guys listening or watching at home are thinking the same thing. I'm just exhausted by it. I think the Pacers' apathy to me, and I've been around this team almost 20 years following or, or uh, covering, I guess, if you want to use that term, the Pacers apathy to me is as high as it was in the Dunleavy Murphy era right now. Really? People are just That's tired of it. People are just checked out. If this is who they are and if they think that they're going to go anywhere by just, well, gee golly, you put in a good effort. We're, we're super competitive. So look, we, we like to make the playoffs every year. If they think they're going to build a that, fan base or build it back up like that, they're wrong. That's that, that voice sounds like the caricature you do of your dad. No, my dad's usually a little bit higher pitched than that, right? My dad, the, the the dad voice that I do doesn't even sound like my dad at all. And it kind of stems from high school, which I feel bad about because I was kind of mean in high school. And now I and I always love my dad, but you appreciate your dad a lot more right. as an adult than you did when you were 17. Yeah, they got smarter as you got older, right? I got smarter, yeah. They got smarter. Well, they, they remain – like, my dad has always been smart. Right. I was really, really dumb – and now I'm extremely intelligent. <laughs> okay. All right. See, I, Jake, unlike you, I have the humility to admit something like that. I have a, I have a summertime topic. I was always good looking. I have a, okay. That never changed. Okay. I have a summer question for you. Okay. Like a question that we would do typically in the summertime. Oh, I thought as it pertains to summer, just no. in general. You want to come back with that next? I do. We'll do that. We've got other stuff to get to today. I told you, Jake, uh, we've got like a bunch of B topics. Kind of like the Pacers roster. We have a bunch of Bs, and we hope that they eventually add up to an A. (laughs) Okay. So we'll see if that happens as we roll along here. Episode 39 of Quarry and Schultz here on ISC Sports Network. How do we get to 39? I know. Crazy. It's here. The moment that will define you. So think of this moment as your moment. The one you've been waiting for. You were built for it. And so were we. WGU, the online university where ambition never rests. Indiana dairy farmers provide us with safe, pure foods for our tables. A responsibility that takes intuition, resolve, and determination to make sure their milk is good for you and delicious to taste. Their connection with our community runs deep, passed down through the generations, ensuring that milk is always available at your store. It's not easy being a dairy farmer, but the rewards have special meaning when you can feed Indiana's families every single day. Learn more at winnersdrinkmilk.com. At Bailey & Wood, we pride ourselves on our five-star customer service. But at our core, we're a family. Family Family-owned and family to our customers, staff, and our community. From charity events to recognizing hometown heroes, we prioritize giving back to our communities that have always supported our growth. So let us help you get your dream home today. Welcome back to Query and Schultz. Greg Rakestraw during the break informs us, and I cannot believe that this one right over me, but episode 39 would be Dave Parker. I far prefer that to Larry Zonka. If we're talking about 70 sports legends, Dave Parker. 
the guy. Dave Parker's kind of one of those guys. I'm trying to think of a good comp for my generation of Dave, who Dave Parker would be. Are we Parker talking baseball be. or in Just other sports? Just sports in general, where at their apex, they were a huge mega star, but didn't ultimately end up being a Hall of Fame player, right? Gary Sheffield. Yeah, but I, Gary Sheffield was a star, but he wasn't like a Darryl, super popular. Daryl Strawberry is a good one. That That's one yeah. that I thought of. Penny Hardaway. Penny Hardaway was really kind of like that for me in the 90s. But the difference, Daryl Strawberry and Dave Parker's decline have something in common that Anthony Hardaway's did not. They were both drug-related, yeah. right? Yeah. But Dave Parker. But Parker in the late 70s was like oh. one of the biggest stars in the sport, right? Correct. That was before my generation. I mean, but. Dave Parker, that, that, that 79 Pirates team, you had Willie Stargell, Dave Parker, Bill Madlock. I mean, they had good players. Uh, Omar Moreno, and they, they were flashy. Dave Parker had a dangling ear. We are family had, pirates. Yeah. Yep. But Dave Parker's signature moment came in, I believe it was the 79 All-Star game, when he threw out, he made a, a throw from right field to home plate on the fly. And it was like, oh my goodness. It might have bounced once, but I mean, it was a strike. Then he also made a throw from right field to third base. That was definitely on the fly. His arm was unbelievable. And he was just a big dude, the Cobra. I mean, he was cool. Yeah. He was Sheffield had a great arm, too, if I remember. Sheffield had the weird bat thing. He did. That was my wiffle ball stance. Okay. Did Gary you Sheffield. see a big article about some people that came up with a wiffle ball stadium here in Indianapolis? And how yeah, we're going we're gonna to broadcast their all-star game. It's the Dirt Yard and the Circle City Wiffle Ball League. We're going to broadcast their game, their all-star game I, on our I immediately thought about percent. how their stadium and their league was far superior to what Oh, it was. Yeah, no doubt. I know you're trying to, to knock me, uh, but it was, it was 20 years ago. I'm just glad that we were able to set – a foundation for the sport that you're now seeing the fruits of our labor really bloom and and you're tasting the juice of that fruit with leagues like is Circle your, City. Is your Mall website still up? I'm not sure. I haven't looked in a long time, but I can well, check here's, that out. So summertime, you played a lot of wiffle ball in the summertime. Here's my summertime question for you. Okay. Give me the band or music that you listen to in the summer that just makes you feel like it's summer that you don't listen to the rest of the year. Oh, that I don't listen to the rest of the like year? Like, there are – okay, for example, I get into this weird thing. Yeah? I don't know why. During the summertime, like, in the evenings, like, country music in the background works for me. And I don't like country music. I don't even like it. It's not – just not my But speed. I just feel like I'm in small town. I can totally understand that. Summer yeah. carnivals. Like, it's just fun. Country music's like UFC for me. I totally get why it's popular. Not my thing. Right. Just not. I did not grow up with it. No, all the stuff that I listen to is stuff that I listen to year round. Um, I do listen to a lot of live fish in the car in the summer months because you roll all the windows down and then you're out of light and you look around and the people are jamming with you. Sometimes they're yeah. singing along if, if we're on a lyrics part. Usually we're just on a jam part. Yeah, because their songs are 28 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, usually lyrics. you're right. Yeah, that, that, that's actually a really good observation, Jake. I didn't know and, that you were familiar with that. And the lyrics are awful. They're actually great. They just take words. You know, it's just blah, 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 a bunch of play, and then the guy just jumps up and goes, "Banner, blah, 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 blah. glasses." Blah, 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 blah. Are you talking about you enjoy Ink myself? Pen. Huh? Are you talking about you enjoy myself? That's one of their most famous live hits. Yem. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not talking about Yem. Because he just Trey just yells who, out at some who, point. Who God, the, I've asked you this I think before. Man, but who is the most the music, okay, you die and you're at the <laughs> okay. pearly gates and St. Peter says, Mr. Schultz, you have to pass a quiz in order to gain admittance into heaven. All right. And you say, okay. And he says, we have right here in front of us. I won't need to do that. I was vice president of my youth group. It's it, Okay. They're like, we have in front of us the roster of every minute of music that you listen to in your lifetime, whether willing or not. Oh, yeah. But we know we're heaven, so we know. You have to predict for us the two albums that you listen to the highest accumulation <laughs> of minutes in your lifetime uh, yeah. for admittance If you, to get the answer right. What oh, do you man. say? Uh, just because I just listened to them all the time through high school and college when I was still – I mean, outside of when I'm in the car, Jake, I'm not listening to music. I understand. Um the two albums that I probably listened to the most in my adolescence, which would, would count for this, um, Enema of the State from Blink-182, and then I got really, really, really into Sublime in high school and then into 
most of my college years. But that was kind of split between three albums, 40 Ounces to Freedom, Robin the Hood, and then their self-titled one. So, Well, they only did like three before. Well, yeah, issue, yeah, right? before, before Brad had the or overdose. In fact, they hadn't even released a self-titled one until after his death. Okay. But probably those two. Um, now, hip-hop-wise, Nas's Illmatic is in constant rotation for me, so that would be there. Now, the same question, but St. Peter says, we also now have the music that you listen to the highest accumulation of your lifetime, yet you never downloaded anything from this band, n- purchased anything from this band, or saw them live in concert. Ooh. Um... I don't. I don't even know who that. I thought you were going to say somebody you've been, you're embarrassed to admit that you've listened. Well, there's to a that lot. too. Um, I mean, Fish would be that for you. We know that. No, I'm not embarrassed of that at all. I'm proud of that. <laughs> yeah, that. Okay. What about for you? Uh, Appetite for destruction. Appetite for destruction and probably um, license to ill. Yeah, uh, that's a great one. Straight out of Compton is very yeah. high on the list. Ill communication uh, would be up there for me because that was more my generation beasties. Okay, Joshua Tree is really yeah. High. Anybody your age, probably Joshua Tree would be a really popular one. Um, thriller, Thriller's really high yeah. on the list. Just, just because it's you can't how about avoid just by it, right? osmosis, Correct. you would have listened Correct. to Thriller a, a whole lot. Correct. If you're 45 years old, um, you know somebody just recently, and I, I'm old. I mean, this comes with the graying of the temples. <laughs> newer stuff not even the old stuff newer stuff i've actually finally acquired an appreciation for bruce springsteen yeah i i I know i don't like his voice well there's it's very uh, i just i I, he sounds like he's grunting he is and i completely respect him as a songwriter and as a musician and people will absolutely throw you down his flight of stairs of bruce springsteen but i just it's hard to enjoy a band or an artist if you don't like their voice, right? I'll tell you. It's okay, kind of like people with Bob Dylan. The artist that I listen to the most or have heard the most or whatever, but I've never actually purchased anything. They've never gotten a dollar from me. Yeah. As a solo artist, Phil Collins. Yeah. I could see it's that. It's just there, right? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. always there. I want to be Sledgehammer. Yeah. Dun, dun. No, that's Peter Gabriel. Phil Collins. No, Peter Gabriel about. was also with Genesis. Phil Collins was as well. Peter Gabriel went solo, which allowed Phil Collins to inherit the Genesis seat, and Peter Gabriel did Sledgehammer no, and Big P- Time. Peter, and Peter Gabriel would be your like, eyes, su- 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 yeah. Salisbury Hill. Nobody no, even knows what the lyrics are of that song. That's Phil Collins. I don't know if is anybody Take asked. Me home. Take, take me take home. Take me home tonight. No, that's, no, no, that's any money. I know that song. Phil it's Collins is Take Me Home. So take, take me home. He's driving around in the in the Mercedes convertible that looks like the one that Kaminsky Method has. But I don't remember. That's it, yes. That's yeah. Phil Collins. Yeah. Who announced his retirement a few years ago, right. and people were like, wait a minute, we haven't done anything in 12 years. I don't think that's right. But that's definitely right. Uh, we got way, way off track. Okay. This portion of the show brought to you by our friends at Chateau Kitchens. We usually, sorry, lead the segment, so I apologize. Chateau Kitchens, right here. Steven and everybody. Um, he actually just went on a vacation to... I think they were out in Yosemite and out west. You know what it was, he said it was at the beautiful. end of the vacation? Almost as beautiful as my kitchen. Do you know what he said at the end of the vacation? What did he say? Take me home. Okay. Because I don't remember. I don't think he wanted to come back to take, Indianapolis take after me home. everything that they saw on that trip. But it's a good thing that he did come back to Indianapolis for people that want to get a kitchen, right? For sure. At Chateau Kitchens on Instagram, also on Facebook, if you want to see some of the work that they've done, the before and after pictures. Those are the testimonies really themselves. I mean, I can tell you all about my kitchen if you if you want to hear it from me, but just look at those before and the after pictures because the visuals show what Chateau Kitchens can do and why they are the premier home remodelers and cabinetry workers in central Indiana. ChateauKitchens.com as well. If you've got a project, have them come out and take a look. They've know, also got a showroom on East Carmel Drive um, up in Carmel if you want to check that out. Cheers? Uh, not really, but I know uh, – obviously I know of it. Cliff from Cheers – yeah, George Went is that his name? No, that's Norm. Cliff Ted Danson. Guy. No, that's is who I'm thinking of. No, that's Ted Danson played. Uh, Christy Alley's character wasn't named Cliff. Sam Malone was. What's that? Christy Alley wasn't Cliff named was Cliff. Cliff was the mailman fella. I don't and recall he went on that Jeopardy, one. But the point being, uh, if Cliff had Chateau Kitchens come and renovate his kitchen, you and I would never see it because we are two people who have never been in his kitchen. 
That's good. So at least we're moving up in years from the original Batman uh-huh. television series right. of the 60s we're now to up now we're up in the 80s. Yeah, with yeah, well, cheers. So. And before we know it, we'll be on that French We're getting reunion. there. That Matthew Perry, something's going on with him, I heard. Did you watch that Friends reunion? No, my wife I never watched the all, original my, my wife was like, can we buy HBO for the month so I can get this French reunion? I was like, yeah, fine, but I, I don't want to watch it. Is that okay? My yeah. wife and I like all the same TV shows. Is that weird? No, that's why you're together. Well, like Project Runway and like all that stuff. I love watching with her. Okay. You're not a PR fan? It's a great show. I mean, there's a reason why it's been around for almost 20 years. Okay. See, here's the thing. You, you make fun of everything that I do, and then I get emails and tweets afterwards. Hey, Schultz, I love what you talked about. First off, you look great. I love what you talked about in the show this mm-hmm. week. Jake is wrong. I don't share those with you because I don't want to hurt your feelings, but not to burst your bubble. A lot, lot more people connect with me than with you okay. when it comes to this stuff. Uh, we're going to do Love That Play as well. Forgot about Love That Play. You got me way off track with this music thing. I didn't know that was a, a summer question, and then we start talking about like bands and stuff. You liked it, though, didn't you? Nah, it was okay. <laughs> it's okay. I always I get mad at you because then you knock me from my itinerary, and then we're scrambling to get and everything And then you get in. emails from people saying that was such a wonderful no, subject that's, matter. I, by I, the I, way, Love That Play is brought to you each and every <laughs> week by the great guys at Love Heating and Air Conditioning and gals. Love-HVAC.com. Or 353-2141 is their telephone number. That's 353-2141. But just remember this. Just remember that when it is summertime and it's really hot, you can say to yourself, man, I love my air conditioning. Or when it's wintertime and it's freezing outside, you say, I love that my furnace is working. Love. Very easy to remember. Been around for over 100 years because they are guaranteed and committed to product, great quality of product, knowledge of the product, and customer service. Love-HVAC.com. Uh, Derek, our nominee for Love That Play. You were watching this game last night, so I was assuming that you were going to pick it too. How do you know I was watching it? Because you were tweeting about it. Okay, which is? Ethan Horvath? Yes. Save? Correct. In the Let me make sure that I get this title right. It's a very prestigious, brand new championship that USA was playing Mexico for. The CONCACAF Nations League Final. Now, so congratulations to us for winning that. It, okay, I have a couple of questions about this. Okay. I, I don't know if I can answer all of them, but I did ask our resident soccer expert, Greg Rakestraw, so this, hopefully I can This ask tournament him. had how many teams in it? I think just CONCACAF teams. So, Which is what team? Uh, Latin America and then the USA. Was are, Canada are part in of it? That. I think Canada is part of CONCACAF, yeah. I mean, it's, it, so is this North American or North and South American? No, it doesn't extend into South America. Just, just Latin America. So Central America. America and Canada. So, so um, North America, right? El Salvador, Mexico, Panama, um, those countries, the USA, Canada, I believe, are the ones. But this had no. Now, I I get very confused by this, and I I promise I'm not going to go off on a soccer rant here. This did not have any bearing on the World Cup standings or eligibility. No, that qualifying starts in a couple of months. So, the 2022 World Cup. That's the next one, right? Yes. That has not yet been no. set. Nope. And we missed the 2018 World Cup, obviously. No, right. In embarrassing fashion. Um, I am not rooting against the United States, obviously. But I saw, you know, yesterday, for example, I saw someone send a tweet saying, there is no doubt now the Ameri- that, that the United States is a favorite for the 2026 World Cup. And I'm like, look, I, I get that, like, beating Mexico, it was, it was an exciting yeah. match game, whatever you want to call it. It was fun. But I just get fatigued by the – see, this is it. This is the proof uh, right yeah, here. This is it. It's been happening for 40 years. Correct. Yeah, I, I hear it's you. been the sport of the future since 1975. Yeah, I, I hear you. My entire lifetime, all I've heard about is how we are right on the cusp I, I of breaking through. I think why people through. are saying that, Jake, is because and, – and Rakestraw can check my math on this. I believe the top two teams – from CONCACAF and these qualifiers both get sent to the World Cup. So all you have to do is be one of the top two teams of that region of the world, and you qualify. Three teams, sorry. See, you have even more of a margin for it. So this did have implication on the World Cup? No, you still have to go through the qualifying. This is just its own thing that the CONCACAF teams get together and they're like, hey, we're not really doing anything right now. You want to make up a championship and play for it? So essentially that's what happened. But I thought you just said that the top three get eligibility for the World Cup. Of CONCACAF. So the reason why somebody would look at last night's game and be like, hey, the USA won this thing. They're favorites to qualify for the World Cup. It's because you're assuming that they're going to be one of the top three teams in CONCACAF. I got you. 
Because usually it's USA and Mexico are the two that jockey right. for one and two as far as those nations. And then who are else concerned. is good? Honduras, uh, is, I think, is made the Costa World Rica Cup. Costa good. Uh, yes. Here, here's the thing, though. Like Honduras is the size of like <laughs> Rhode Island. Me hand signals. I don't even know. This. I mean, I, I mean, oh. all your top athletes go though. I mean, there's something there's something to that. The organization with American soccer, I think, has been. Um, a little too hesitant to change. Uh, I'm going to kind of say this club. again. That, that, then, those, these are the complaints that I've seen from other people. So I, I, I don't want to say this again, like and then I'm off my soapbox. Okay. And this is the one thing that may help soccer in this country finally. Okay? But hear me out. For a long time, like when people say, like, well, soccer is the number one played youth sport in the United States. There are more people playing, more kids are playing soccer than any other sport. Totally understand it. Part of that, I'm not saying all, part of that is because, and I have plenty of friends with children that this meets the you know, what I'm talking about. If you have a child who is not overly athletic, maybe doesn't even like sports, or is has a shyness about them, or maybe even, and I don't mean this in any way, shape, or form as a, as a negative or a derogatory thing, is on the spectrum, whatever it might be, and you want to them to benefit from learning about teamwork and the things that you want out of youth sports, getting exercise, physical fitness, but you don't want a sport where the focus at any point in the contest is entirely on them because that might be difficult for them. In soccer, they don't have to go to the free throw line. In soccer, they don't have to stand in the batter's box where everyone is looking at them. In soccer, they're not playing with the rigorous physical contact of football. So you have more people at a younger age enlisting and enrolling their kids in soccer then what happens is that allows some kids to understand their superior athletic ability and they get to an age where Derek they get into middle school and then it's like oh but I really enjoy playing football or basketball or baseball or other sports I'm not saying necessarily that they're always going to pick that over soccer but the other options come into play at a later age and so they funnel that way the one thing for soccer now that might might finally be getting some traction, but it's we're still 15 to 20 years from it really seeing the benefit of it, is the fact that fewer people are sending their kids to play American football. And so you might have the Barry Sanders and the LeBron Jameses of the world Instead, of, I mean, can you imagine Barry Sanders as a soccer as a soccer player, right? Yeah, I mean, you pick any elite athlete. I mean, Trevor sport. Lawrence. Yeah. Imagine Trevor Lawrence as a soccer yeah. player. Like he could run. He, you know, he's he's got great vision. Sure. Obviously, he can anticipate. Yeah. As more and more people are, are are taking their kids away from playing contact football, soccer might be the avenue they go. So you're getting an increase in the level of elite athletes playing that sport. But it is mystifying that a country the size of Kentucky can dominate the United States in soccer. Yeah, it's wild. And we made the final eight, I think, in uh, in 2002 and ended up losing, I believe, to Germany. They beat Mexico in a, in a round of 16 Cup? game. Yeah. They lost to Portugal, didn't they? Uh, the, well, they lost to Portugal in 20 uh, – they lost to Belgium. Oh, oh two, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about 20 – and, and right. now you're looking up and you're like, wow, that was 20 years ago. Right. And you thought that that was the turning point for U.S. soccer. Right. Or the 94 World Cup being here, the, oh, that's the turning point. You know, we've, we've had a lot of turning points that haven't really materialized. But I think it's settled in nicely. I mean, clearly the popularity um, and fan following is way above where it was 10 years ago. Um just with people getting into the Euro League stuff in my the, time. The one thing that, that does drive me crazy is fans of soccer that insist on talking like – Yeah, I don't know why we have to like, uh, borrow that. You know, people that are yeah. like, oh, the, uh, did you watch the match yesterday? It was level. Mexico are the favorite. Yeah, it was level and what? then uh, we Mexico lost – Mexico is the favorite? We lost 1-2. Yeah. He got beat 2-1. to one. I hear you. I That fatigues me as well. They did not yesterday yeah. win 2-3. I'm 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 kind of with you there, but it was cool for uh, Ethan Horvath because he is a native of Denver. His father played professional soccer in the city. Yeah, of they Denver. had like 20 friends in the crowd, right? And family. That game was in Denver. My buddy Matt Jacklin's uh, wife actually worked the game. Was there? Nice. Um, we got to do something about the fans, man. They got to stop. 
You guys have to stop. Please, bad. if you're watching this and you, you like to throw things at players, please stop doing it. It was bad. It was ugly. And the chance and all of that. I mean, I and I'm not going to point fingers. Oh, it's it's the American fans, the Mexican fans. Look, I. It was in America. Yeah, pe- people can't. It was do in America. This. People can't do this. Even if it was a, a more so one fan base compared to the other, just just it was stop in the with United the United States. Stop so with the, the people behavior. there were in the United States. Love dash hvac dot com three five three twenty one forty one. Give our friends uh, Chris John. And the rest of the love crew a call today. Love HVAC. We'll come back, pick our winners of the week. And we've got a couple of other topics to hustle up on, including Brad Stevens making the move up the ladder instead of away from the ladder in Boston. It's Quarry and Schultz, ISC Sports Network. Stick around. You can't get enough of us. Good one, J-Man. This is the worst scandal. This might this even is be... worse than steroid. Not so fast. Are you going to watch the XFL? I'll probably watch a little bit of it. You want to go through and pick some games? No, I don't. No, I don't. I really don't. At an Indiana dairy farm, long work days stretch into more labor after sunset. A newborn calf needs watching. Barn needs cleaning. Tractor needs some handiwork for tomorrow's tasks. Just like in your own home, the day's chores are never done until the family beds down for the night. Dairy farmers and their families share the same dream with all of us, that what we all do is worthwhile. Bringing to market pure, safe, and healthy dairy foods is what they do, from Indiana's dairy families to ours every single day. Learn more at winnersdrinkmilk.com. It's here. moment that will define you. So think of this moment as your moment. The one you've been waiting for. You were built for it. And so were we. WGU, the online university where ambition never rests. Whether you're watching on ISC Sports Network, perhaps our show archive on YouTube, maybe you're listening on podcast, maybe you watch us on ISC on Tuesday, on Comcast on Wednesday, on YouTube on Thursday, and then listen to the podcast on Friday. Nobody, because I, I know that there that. are people that do that, where they consume the show four times every single week. And, you know, obviously, if you're doing the math, okay. hundreds and okay. thousands of people doing that four times a week, it's crazy. Let's list all of those people that are not named Crispy. Well, Crispy happens to be one. I'm glad that you mentioned Chris Phillips, a longtime listener right. of ours. He does consume the show every single day of his life, <laughs> and we really appreciate that. We also appreciate our partnership with American Dairy Association Indiana, who presents our Winner's Drink Milk Winner of the Week. And I actually stole yours because I did Horvath for our Love That Play, and that was actually your Winner of the Week, which I did not know. But I have an alternate a backup winner. Okay. This he's is a, my he's a teammate starter yours, winner. Okay. Devin Booker is my winner of the week. A guy who you had mentioned this, I think, earlier in the show today with with TJ Warren. You were worried about Booker being a stat guy, a 25 20 guy, which is a Jake term that I use all the time because I think it's a great term. 25 points per game on a 20 win team. And obviously, it took a long time for the Suns to kind of come into their own, but for Booker to come out like he did guns a-blazing in a closeout game against LeBron and the Lakers. I get their injury situation and all of that for L.A., but still, they were the defending champs, and to drop 47 on them. He was uh, – You know, you talk about – like his first five threes or eight something. Eight of ten for the game, too. Yeah. You, you talk about kind of a coming of age for Devin Booker, one of the bright young superstars in the league, and we'll see how far the Suns can go, but, man, what a performance. And – a great run here so far from Phoenix, silencing a lot of the doubters with that first You know what's interesting about Phoenix? You know, they've had, obviously, what you're seeing now is a team that had the benefit of some consecutive lottery years. Yeah. So DeAndre Ayton, who's a nice player. I mean, he's not – but, I mean, he is an important piece for them. Devin Booker, as you mentioned. Remember they had a top five, I think, pick, and they took Josh Jackson out of Kansas? Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, uh, did, I, mean, did I mean, they flipped him. Uh, where did they – what did they get for him? I'd have to look. I think they got a second round because they bailed on that quickly. Yeah, but that's the thing about you know Kansas. The, Kansas seems to be the lead of players Josh, that come Josh out. Josh Shelby, are, Josh Shelby, Ben McLemore, and even the guys that end up being okay NBA I mean, players. You know, Mark Heath and Marcus Morris. Whatever, they're fine. Andrew Wiggins is okay. Yeah, Wiggins actually started. Wiggins to play is well a twenty-five. 
I think, a prototypical 25 and 20 guy. Correct. I think Wiggins is a guy that can fill it up for a bad team. But even for, like, Philly, remember, they go through the process and they drafted Fultz. Right. You know, yeah, they got Embiid and they got Simmons and they got some pieces that really have helped them, but they've also missed a couple of times. Now, the guy that I'm going to – see what they got for Josh Jackson, I'm curious, though. But my winner oh, of the week – Jalil Okafor, I completely forgot that they drafted him, too. Yeah. In that Devin Booker draft. Um, Sorry, go ahead. The American Dairy Association of Indiana Winners Drink Milk Winner of the Week for me. This is interesting, Derek. In the last 10 years, something like that, there have been two teams that were the defending NBA champions and got bounced the next year in the first round. We obviously just saw it with the Lakers. Yeah. Do you know the last one? The last 10 years? I think maybe the last 15. NBA champs the and then bounced in the to. first the round? The last two that it's happened to. The Lakers are one. Who's the other? Uh, I, I don't know. The San Antonio Spurs. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, hmm. do you know the common thread for both teams? I don't. They lost in the first round to Chris Paul. Chris Paul, oh, wow. who I've been very critical of. Yeah. Chris Paul, who I've said I think he's overrated. I know he's a talented guy. He's never been to a conference finals. Maybe this is the year. But because of the fact that he was able to be a part of that unique statistic, he is my and I think the, the, uh, the, the appreciation of Chris Paul stems back to last year where he goes to the Thunder and he could have mailed it in and just collected his money. And instead he was like, no, you know what? I'm here. I want to improve this team. And they got a lot better. I mean, look at him since they've left, since he's left. And look at Phoenix now kind of coming to do, their own. Do you have the milk I do. stats here? But to me, Jake, winning, when people say winning, he's not a winner. A lot of times they're talking about championships. And You're I'm thinking right. to myself, well, wait a minute. Reggie Miller won zero championships. Is anybody going to sit here and say that Reggie Miller wasn't a winner or didn't help his team win? Of course he was a winner. Did they you, drink milk? You know, if they drink I milk, think with Paul, it's winners the same thing. Milk. Chris Paul could go without an NBA championship and still be a winner and a, a Hall of Fame all-time great level player to me. So – I think a lot of the criticisms had to do with this culture that we're in now where it's just you're counting rings, and if you don't have them, then you stink. You I mean, the, is Damian Lillard not a winner? Do you have the milk facts? Yeah. Sorry, I was in the middle of a great point there, and then you want to <laughs> Trust torpedo me. that. People would rather see All me right. drink chocolate milk. Milk facts time, real quick here. Uh, winnersdrinkmilk.com, by the way, if you want to find some more of your milk facts. Low-fat chocolate milk like Jake has right there, eight ounces of it. As much calcium as 10 cups of raw spinach, as much potassium as a banana, and as much vitamin A as two hard-boiled eggs. Thanks to our friends at American Dairy Association, Indiana, for our winner of the week. That is a perfect, uh, perfect Brad record. Stevens moving on, but staying with the Celtics. Shocking move as he takes over for Danny Ainge as the president of basketball ops. I'm not surprised at all that he walked away from coaching. Um, eight years is a long time. It's kind of like dog years in the NBA. So, 56, right? And clearly things were kind of going like this for, right. for Stevens. Um I'm, I am surprised, though, and you had mentioned that somebody had said to you, well, he really flamed out. I don't think that was the case. I think what happened with Boston, and this wasn't all Stevens' fault, they missed their window. Yeah, They had a window there where LeBron was dragging those Jordan Clarkson, uh, who's now turned into a good player, but n not for them, Cavaliers teams to the NBA Finals, and Ainge was too busy hoarding assets instead of making big moves to push that team over the top. And right. I think that was their failing, not anything that Stevens did as a coach. You know, I, I think for Brad Stevens, Derek, it came down to this simply, and that is that I think that he just was fatigued on coaching itself, the travel. I think that he was getting – there was discussion with his wife just about the family life and kids growing up and mm -hmm. you know wanting to be around more. And it's, it's a win-win for him because I know, you know there were a lot of people – when when Indiana reached out to him and they offered him, you know, a king's ransom to come back to Bloomington, I think the thought was, look, I don't, I I, I want to be able to just be at home and you know not have to travel and recruit and and fly to games all the time. And obviously, that expression was made by him within Boston, and the ownership said, yeah, you know what, if Danny Ainge, we got to make a change here, and I don't know that Ainge's departure was 100 percent Danny Ainge. I mean, I think that. That time was probably – Yeah. That expiration date was there. So I, I think was, they both sides probably felt like, okay, this is going right. to an end. Um, Stevens is a very good analytical mind. And, and clearly the one thing, as we saw it with Butler, that I think he's really good at is figuring out how to mesh personalities and people into, a, into one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and get guys to buy in. So he now has that autonomy. 
for the roster, and we'll see what that means for uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. And you know, there there are a couple of guys that they brought in there that I think just didn't necessarily mesh well, and that is part of why it went south for them. So he would know better than anybody how like, it, how it's going to mold. Yeah, I think they just needed a player or two to push them over the top, and they never really they had the draft assets and picks to make that happen, and they just they never really were able to make that happen for them. But I think the world of Stevens, so I think that he's going to do a great job as an executive. I'll be curious to see how long he's an executive. You know, I mean, he's going to make enough money. That's the other thing. Yeah. He probably doubled his salary, right? I would think, though, making a move like this and agreeing to take over for Ainge, like somebody was like, well, is this just a one-year thing? And I'm like, no, I don't think the Celtics would have agreed to it unless they had some right. assurances that he's in it for at least a couple of years right. to build forward here. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if he wants to make a career change, he went to DePaul, right? Yes, and Zionsville High School. And then he w worked at Lilly. Mm-hmm. Maybe he says to himself, you know what, I just – I want to do something totally different. I want to become – I want to get into nursing, whatever it might be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brad Stevens can do that, actually, because all he has to do is get – he doesn't even have to go into a classroom. Go to WGU.edu. WGU.edu. Look at Derek. He's holding up. Sage the Owl. You know, ambition never rests, and that's the great thing about WGU, Indiana's largest online accredited – university where you can work at your schedule whether you want to go back and complete a degree whether you want to make a career change and get a new degree wgu indiana is the school for you because you work at your pace your schedule and you can do so online again right there sage the owl looking in wgu.edu slash indiana is your place for the largest online accredited university what what are you doing i don't like the graphic it's wonderful I always prepare myself for it, but it's just the eye. And the eye's on my side. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, at least I could get the shaded eye. Like, can we flip that around? Jordan's a uh, Photoshop expert, so maybe we can, he could Photoshop that and put the dark eye on this side because I, I don't like the glare of the full look eye. Look how intently he's staring, though. Like, look, at this is a spotlight, like, right at my seat. Right. You're shaded. It's like Rockwell. He's like, that's Sage, but like we it. call him Rockwell. Somebody's I like Corey. I love WGU me. Indiana. I'm just I'm not not a Sage fan. Oh, You're just not gonna not gonna force that like to me. Somebody's watching. So now okay, now we're up to 1983 Derek, or so. You have to like WGU because you know, I mean, it allowed your wife the opportunity to complete her nursing. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a huge like I said, I'm a huge fan of WGU Indiana and everything about it. I'm not a fan of Sage. So you can like something without liking everything. Like, there are so many things that I like about you, but there are certain things that I don't like. About and that, me? That'll never, I didn't know there's anything you like about me. Yeah. No, I mean, come on, man. We're best friends. So there are lots of things, obviously, that <laughs> I like about get ahead you, of but there are lots of things. I'm calling like. Bull Schultz on that. That's a warm-up for the is. next segment. Number one thing I don't like about you, you're not public about our friendship and our relationship. You're not truthful about it. Okay. You, want, you want to hide it, when in reality, it is a strong, best friendship. Okay. Are we doing Byron to Bull Schultz you had, next? Your, you had your heart attack, and we had an emotional phone call afterwards. But I'm, I'm not going to air that because that's, I don't remember that's that. talking between – you were on a lot of medication. <laughs> we were talking between uh -huh. two best friends. Uh -huh. So I know that you don't want to mention that. But that's fine. <laughs> okay. I always have it. Byron or Bull Bleep, when we come back. I'm the calling shop my ending. doctor right now to ask if I was permitted to make unauthorized and accept unauthorized phone calls. And we will wrap up this show. Quarry and Schultz, two best friends mm -hmm. here on ISC Sports Network. here the moment that will define you so think of this moment as your moment the one you've been waiting for you were built for it and so were we wgu the online university where ambition never rests Indiana dairy farmers provide us with safe, pure foods for our tables. A responsibility that takes intuition, resolve, and determination to make sure their milk is good for you and delicious to taste. Their connection with our community runs deep, passed down through the generations, ensuring that milk is always available at your store. It's not easy being a dairy farmer, but the rewards have special meaning when you can feed Indiana's families every single day. Learn more at winnersdrinkmilk.com. At Bailey & Wood, we pride ourselves on our five-star customer service. 
But at our core, we're a family. Family owned and family to our customers, staff, and our community. From charity events to recognizing hometown heroes, we prioritize giving back to our communities that have always supported our growth. So let us help you get your dream home today. Derek, can I, uh, can I make you aware of something that's been happening with me for like four years and I'm at the, I'm at the breaking point with it. I, I don't know. Well, if know. it's four years, it's not your heart attack insurance claim. I know that's been more like you know, you got more like six months that you've been dealing with that. Yeah, yeah and then you get me started there. That's, <laughs> thanks no, for bringing that four up. Four years, you got to tell me. I don't know. I, it was probably four years ago, three years ago, somewhere in there. Uh, for IndyCar, we were at Road America, which is Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and the Reds were playing the Brewers in Milwaukee. And I thought, oh, great. I'll buy a ticket to the game. Buy my set. Nobody else wanted to go. So I bought literally like a $6 ticket in the top of, Mil of this Miller Park or whatever. Yeah. Well, I went online to buy the tickets, and I went through the Brewers' website. Have you ever – Used a major league baseball team. Doesn't website. it usually kick you to Ticketmaster? I thought I, 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 I don't know what it did. I did buy my Yankees tickets through Yankees.com. I get emails daily from both the Brewers and the Reds. Constantly. And you can't unsubscribe. I've tried a yeah. hundred every day. Mm. Every day. Unsubscribe on Milwaukee Brewers and Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> I love you, Reds. Love you. Now you hate them. And I kinda like the Brewers too. Yeah, I got you are answer. harassing me. It is stalking me. Block? I have, I've tried everything. Okay, I've tried everything. Hotmail I, doesn't have those settings. I, I don't know. I, I use my Apple email. Oh, okay. Because it's to my phone, right? Oh, great. I'm telling you, it is borderline harassment. So if you are watching this, Milwaukee Brewers or Cincinnati Reds, okay. I, I mean, I'm not going to sue you, but it's ridiculous. Do not ever give your email address to these Major League Baseball teams. The shopindy.com presents our next feature, Buy It or Bull Bleep. They've also got two brick-and-mortar locations, and you'll never have to deal with them sending you unwanted Correct. emails. Correct. They're wonderful. Brian, Alex, and the rest of the crew over there. Right here. Uh, if you go up to Clay Terrace in Carmel, or if you head down to Broad Ripple in the Strip, you can find both of the shop's locations. You actually know, is it 921? 920 Broad Ripple Avenue. 920. Okay, see, I was close enough. Broad Ripple Avenue for the shop, .com. You can see some of I'll bet you'd remember if it was this 420 Broad shirt. Ripple Avenue. Now, wouldn't you? And this is a shop shirt. What's That's that right. supposed to mean? Huh? I'm just saying. 920 Broad Ripple Avenue. Anybody that wants to do that, but that is something that I, I no longer do. Okay. Mm -hmm. But here's the shop, what we do. The shop is something you still do. With, oh, absolutely. With buy it or bulb bleep, I give a statement. Jake and I go back and forth whether we buy it or it's bulb bleep. Ready? Statement one. Yep. The uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. The Tennessee Titans are now the second best team in the AFC. Buy it or bulb bleep. Assuming that the Chiefs, as the reigning AFC champions, are the best with Pat Mahomes. I'm going to say that's Bull Schultz. I think they're good. I don't think you can definitively say that, regardless. Well, it's a bite or bold bleep. Go big or go home. Second best team. Right, let's list some of the other contenders for that. How about there? There are two that jump Baltimore, out. Baltimore, who knocked them out of the playoffs. Buffalo. Buffalo. And I, I think you have to put Cleveland there, don't you? Yeah, yeah Cleveland. With too. what they've got coming back, you know this. You know the team that's going to make a big leap this year. Who? A big leap this year. Raiders. The team that I always say, like in week twelve, you're going to go. Are they? Are they actually good? I think they're good. Big leap this year. Cincinnati. Nope. I don't know. Tell me. West Coast. Still don't know. Promising young quarterback. Chargers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But um, the Chargers. I, they may be on par, the Titans, with Buffalo or with Cleveland or with Baltimore. But not enough body of work to say definitively second best. So I will say Bull Schultz. Okay, good. Yeah, because it's Bider Bull Bleep. There's no, no qualifiers here with that. Uh, I'm going to say Bull Bleep as well. I think pound for pound, I think Buffalo is the second best team, mostly because – even though I've been defending Lamar Jackson, I think Allen is above that level. It's good. Um, I think if you, if you if you were forced to take a quarterback today, I think you'd take Allen. Right. And I don't think it's and no offense to Lamar Jackson, I don't think it's particularly close. I understand that he's a, a one MVP and all of that. Um, clearly, Allen looks like 
the next cream of the crop type, like Aaron Rodgers, dominant, num- clear number one quarterback. Good player. Um, even you know you've got Mahomes, <laughs> so I don't want to say. I'm kind of waiting for. <laughs> I'm kind of waiting for things to come back down I, with yeah, Josh Allen. I, I, but I don't want people to be like, oh well, Allen. Derek said Allen's going to be the best quarterback in the league. No, I think he's going to be an elite level quarterback, and that's the leap that you saw from last year. If that is sustainable for him, then watch out. Statement two, Brad Stevens will have more success as an executive than he did as a head coach in the NBA. Uh, no, I buy that. I mean, I do think Boston probably is going to win a title in the next five years. Oh, yeah? Really? Jason Tatum's really Tatum's good, Tatum's a good guy to build around. Yeah. That's the thing. That's what, Pacers. Jalen Brown, how, too, how do you have you. How do you have a chance when you don't have – every team left has a guy right now. I mean, Jokic, and and obviously with the Clippers, they've got multiple Jokic guys. Jokic was a second-round pick, Derek. And I, it's just, yeah, you got to get, I mean, Giannis was picked, what, 18th, 19th, yeah. whatever he was, so you, you got to get lucky sometimes. Um, but you have to you But Milwaukee, have to what have they that. were able to do with Giannis is retain him. Yeah, well, that's a big part of it, too. But you have to have at least one guy, if not a guy and a half or two guys. And every team left has two guys or a guy and a half, and the Pacers have, like, uh, Sabonis might be half a guy. I right. guess they he's probably five, your closest thing to a five guy. Half guys, yes. I mean, Levert maybe can get there still, even though um, I'm I'm bullish about Levert, more bullish than most. But I don't. I mean, what's his max? I, I think Levert to me's ceiling is Oladipo's one good year here, hey, where Ola, he's like a, a by the an way, All NBA third how, team. How level big player. did Oladipo lose on his own self gamble? Yeah, he's especially with the injury. It's gonna he, be. A he lot. may not play again. Yeah. Well, I. I think he will. Um, it's going to be another long road back for him, though, unfortunately. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, don't cry for him. He's a traitor or whatever. Um, I feel bad for the dude. I mean, he, he once was he, – he's one of the most popular players in, in Indiana basketball's modern history. Bought his, bought his own hype, though. Yeah, he did. I'm not saying that he's blameless in how this thing bought played his out. Own hype. I'm just telling you that I can't, I can't kill a guy forever. You know right. what I mean? I just – even Paul George, even though – I'm not not a fan. Uh, final one. The Indy 500 ratings will be built upon by the series this season. Buy it or bull bleep. If you didn't see, great ratings. Best since 2016. Elaborate what you mean by built upon. <sighs> Positive momentum forward for the series. Or, you know, because a lot of the feeling is the 500 is whatever. It's its own entity. Yeah, I it hope has you're nothing right. to do with the rest of the races on the calendar. I hope you're right. The challenge is the fact that for people that watched it and were like, wow, this is captivating. This is, you know, this is awesome, cool stuff. Um you don't go back to an oval now. And so now, you know, you have to hope it translates. People watch Bell Isle and are like, well, this is still cool and yada, yada. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's a challenge that Elio is not going to be in every race. And then there's the challenge that 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 500 television rating is largely bolstered by the 21.3 that the market of Indianapolis received. Yeah. But um, I'm curious to see what happens with the TV contracts moving forward. Um I will say, Derek, that the growth is going to, though, show itself because of the fact that the the promising young stars, I mean, you know, Pata Award and Colton Herta and Renus VK in particular, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're exciting personalities that I think are going to be out there and more and more people will gravitate towards following them a little bit. So I would say that... At least you're not going backwards out. like most motorsports. Right. So that's that's good. You're not going the other way um but how forward are you going to go but then again there's not much room to go but up for right. IndyCar uh correct me if I'm wrong was the Milwaukee Mile right after the 500 for, for many time. years for a long and time. that's an oval so that would have been correct. cool to correct and Texas maybe Texas a few years also. was yep and now you don't have that anymore um by the way that rating hopefully will show that they just need to go ahead, and, and Mark Miles needs to fight for this. And I get that he's kind of as a foot in both camps. Um, they got to just end the blackout. Uh, there's no reason to have it. The, the the reason that they have the blackout is because, well, we've always had the blackout, and that's always a crappy reason for doing anything. Um, let, let the numbers be inflated by the indie audience and go to advertisers with that and help build the series. Um, but the biggest reason for me, Jake, is that there are many people – that have some sort of a physical disability or limitation that cannot attend that race. There are many people that mentally cannot attend the race. A- anxiety, uh, crowds. Um, I love the Indy 500. It is the biggest hassle in the world to attend an Indy 500. It's a great race. I love it. It's, it's a wonderful day. It's the biggest hassle in the world to attend that race. And that's why I think they should end the blackout for people that love the race but feel like they don't want to. Either they, they don't want to or can't put up with all of that. 
I think they should. Sorry, that's my with, yearly blackout. They should right. keep with tradition, and people can enjoy the radio network. Hmm. Or that. It's a good company line that you're telling there. Well, I have somewhat of an invested interest in it. Well, if you if you want to watch the race, just go. Uh, yeah, sorry. My 78-year-old dad who's in a wheelchair cannot attend the race. He would like to watch it. You know what I mean? Like, I understand. He's had tickets for 40 years. He can't climb up into J-Stand anymore. Right. Uh, it bothers me okay. if you can't tell. You could still watch it that night on the replay. No. No. You watch it live. Watch okay. the replay. Grandpa Bob needs to watch a live race. What do you? Bill, I just made are somebody. Bill my, my dad actually isn't seventy-eight or in a wheelchair. Do it live. There are people that are. Well, do it live. <laughs> you know who I am a fan of. Unlike the TV blackout, is our friends at Bailey and Wood. As we wrap up the show today, Indiana's hometown mortgage lender eight five 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 three zero home. No, it's not five three zero three three five five home. I don't want to look at my sheet because I want to get this right. Eight five five three fifty home. How do you know? You don't even have the notes in front of you. 350 HOME. That is right. 855 BAWFG.com. Com, right? What I, I said 350 to start, didn't I? BAWFG.com, right? Yes. I, I always get the web, <clears throat> excuse me. I always get the website right. I said didn't I say 350? No. <clears throat> Can we roll that back? 350 855 Sorry, it's, it's 350. The end of the show, but I'm starting to lose my voice now. Uh, among <clears throat> other things. Excuse me. Well, I've been carrying this program. 855-350-HOME. Okay. Yeah, that's what Mike I said. Mike Wood and his team are the best in the business. They're going to give you that hometown feel. They are that. Hometown mortgage lender. Uh, you need to get pre-approval, call Bailey and Wood. You need to refi, call Bailey and Wood. Anything that involves your mortgage, when you call, call Bailey and Wood. When you call Bailey and Wood to tell them which of the two of us clearly is more interested in promoting their product, you let them know when you call at 855-350-HOME. Very interested in promoting that. I, I'm not I saying just, I'm having a little trouble with the middle number in their phone number but who uses phones anymore bawfg.com that's how you should contact bailey and wood okay pick up your phone and do the whole like rotary dial nobody does it anymore okay people don't even have landlines thanks to bailey and wood thanks to uh love heating and cooling thanks to wgu indiana american dairy association indiana chateau kitchens the, the shop, shop. <clears throat> It's, it's, it's a good thing. That what we're, is going on here? I'm having some problems. <laughs> He's getting choked up. I mean, milk is put. I'm milk having some soothes local the throat, issues. But, <laughs> C, 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 D, 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 D. Okay. I'm trying. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, this is the moneymaker here, Jake. So you're, you're <laughs> laughing at it, but this is, how okay. I put, this is how I put food on the table for my family. So okay. I, need, I need the voice to be okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you to all of our great sponsors. Mm hmm for sponsoring the show and thanks for watching <laughs> what is, thank you all of you, you who have been watching the program today don't worry about Derek he can't talk and that's going to be the best <sighs> thing to happen to this show as a matter of fact that's the reason that we're going to make it to episode number 40 the Calvert Cheney episode which you will see right here on the same places where you're watching us now or hear it on the same places you're listening we thank you and we'll see if Derek can talk next week have a good one have a good week yeah okay take care <laughs>
Hamilton will score! Your life is on the go. Now your viewing habits can be on the go. With the ISC Sports Network app, your team is at your fingertips. You can download years worth of content from the ISC Sports Network library, high school, college, special events, weekly and monthly shows, wherever you find your favorite app. And you can always find out more information at iscsportsnetwork.com.